Hi, my name is George Fournier. I work for Acme Monaco Corporation and my position there is Vice President of Engineering. Today, we're going to teach you how to make a better spring. Our next spring type is extension spring. Now, an extension spring works opposite than a compression spring does. You have close wound spring with hooks on the ends. Uh, you have a free length, a body length, um, an ID, an OD, and a little thing called initial tension. And initial tension has to be factored in in an extension spring because that's what keeps the coils together. Never specify a hook position unless it's important. A lot of times hook position is important from an assembly standpoint where the openings have to be a certain way for assembly. Other times it may not be important. If that's the case, then don't specify the hook position, leave it up to the manufacturer. The outcome is whatever he's able to manufacture. The calculations for an extension spring, the formulas are identical to a compression spring. The only difference is in an extension spring, you have what's called initial tension. That's what keeps the coils closely wound. Now that has to be factored in when you're doing your calculations. One of the things that you have to be aware of on an extension spring is the stress level. The stress levels on an extension spring should be 10 to 15% lower than they would be on a compression spring only because of the extreme bending that's taking place on the hooks and, uh, and the stresses on the coils. Uh, when you design an extension spring, always make sure that you have adequate initial tension. If you have too little, the, the, the spring becomes unwieldy. It doesn't give you accurate forces. If it's too much, uh, you get a lot of coil slippage and it could add uh, to the stress levels of the spring. And finally, just like compression springs, where you specify a load at a certain height. An extension spring, you should specify a load at a certain length between the hooks. Another thing you have to consider are the stresses in the hooks. And now the stresses in the hooks, you can calculate the stresses on the spring and they can be safe, but the stresses in the hooks are always higher than what's in the body of the spring. And what happens there is you have a bending stress and you have a torsional stress. And if those stressors are too high, you'll get premature failure on the hooks. If you want me to share these formulas with you, all you have to do is call and, and we can discuss your design and I can send you the formulas and maybe even send you uh, a copy of the manual and uh, we can take it from there. While springs are often the least expensive part of your assembly, failure can bring costly machine downtime and product rejects. To assure higher quality and longer reliability, we offer a comprehensive spring design and analysis program and mechanical requirements, manufacturing feasibility, and in-use predictability. We are experts in compression, extension, torsion, and beam springs.